Six boys steal a fishing boat only to end up stranded on a deserted island for months. In 1965, off the coast of Tonga, a group of boys set out for what they thought would be a couple days of fun. In reality, their reckless joyride turned into a nightmare that would last for over a year. Lost and alone, they were forced to find a way to survive on a deserted island by themselves until a fishing boat happened to pass by. It was a hot day in June, and six Tongan boys, Sion, Stephen, Kolo, David, Luke, and Mano, boarding school students in Tonga's capital, Nuka'alofa, needed a change of scenery. The strict Catholic school atmosphere wasn't suiting them. Though they ranged in age from 13 to 16, the boys shared a major commonality. They were bored and tired of school meals. Their solution was to go fishing, so they planned to sail to Fiji. However, being teens, none of them had transportation. They needed a boat. Luckily, local fisherman Tanila Uhila had a few, so, already disliking him, they snuck down to the waterfront and borrowed one 24-foot craft. With a lack of seafaring experience but plenty of anxiety to get going, the boys didn't pack carefully. They brought two sacks of bananas, some coconuts, and a gas burner. Nothing more, not even a map or a compass. Late in the evening, they made their getaway from Nokualofa's harbor, not telling anyone where they were going. At first, things went well. No one saw them leave, and the weather was clear. However, in the wee hours of the morning, they made a huge mistake. After dropping anchor off the coast of Tonga Tapu, they fell asleep, with no one awake on watch. A storm rolled in, breaking the anchor rope, and the boys awoke to a squall. The wind tore up their sail, and tossing seas snapped the rudder. For the next week, the boat drifted aimlessly. Mano later recounted that they had no water or food except for a few raw fish. They collected a bit of rain in coconut shells, but the water was so limited each boy only got two sips per day. But after eight days, when the boat was beginning to fall apart, they spied their saving grace. An island jutted up over the horizon. One side was mostly sharp rocks and cliffs. Not beachy or inviting, but it had a few trees and it was land. The boys scrambled ashore. This was the island of Atta, considered to be uninhabitable. It was once home to a thriving community, but in 1863, almost half its population had been kidnapped for slavery or killed by disease. So the remaining citizens relocated to nearby Ua. The boys didn't know this. All they knew is that they needed ground rules. They promised not to argue on the island because fights would likely escalate and become life-threatening. If things got heated, they separated until they calmed down and then reconvened to apologize. The boys also created a schedule. They did everything in pairs so that in case of danger, nobody was ever alone. They set up a garden, kitchen, and watch posts and then made a roster to assign rotating duties. Every morning and evening, they sang and had group prayer. In the beginning, the group ate fish, coconuts, and any seabirds they could catch. As they explored the further inland, they discovered an old volcano where the former Atta civilization had been. There, they found wild taro, bananas, and chickens, descended from those kept by former inhabitants. With a gas burner, the boys lit a fire and tended it constantly for 15 months. They carved out fallen tree trunks to collect rainwater, built coops for the wild chickens, and fashioned a rugged gymnasium and badminton court for downtime. To keep spirits high, Kolo made a small guitar. He salvaged steel wires from the boat, which was now in pieces, and attached them to a piece of driftwood and a coconut shell he had carved with the group's only knife blade. The musical boost was much needed. Rain was scarce, and the boys were parched of thirst. They built a raft to escape, but it was destroyed in the powerful waves. One day, Stephen slipped and fell on a cliff, breaking his leg. Just when the boys thought they'd be there forever, passing fishermen, Peter Warner noticed a strange pattern of fires on Atta. He sailed closer to check it out and saw a human jump into the sea, swimming straight for his boat. The boy was Stephen, and he was followed by the other five. We're from Tonga, and we've been here 15 months. 
They told Warner, who radioed the news to the mainland. The radio operator confirmed their story ecstatically. The boys had been thought dead. When they returned to Nuka Alofa, a huge celebration was held. Doctors were stunned at the boys' good health, particularly at Stephen's perfectly healed leg. The fisherman, Tanila Uhila, was irate about the loss of his boat, but Warner purchased a new one for him to smooth things over. Warner had a new ship commissioned and called it Atta. He hired the six boys, now men, to join him as crew, and they were finally able to fulfill their desire to travel the world, fishing and seeing what lay beyond Tonga. In 2020, the story of the castaways resurfaced and reconnected the four Atta survivors with Peter Warner. News of this reached Hollywood, and U.S. film studio New Regency bought the story rights, with the survivors hired as consultants.